In the arid landscapes of Cretaceous South America, a true giant reigned supreme. Longer than a school bus and armed with a mouthful of serrated knives, Giganotosaurus was an apex predator of terrifying proportions. For millions of years, it stood at the top of its food chain, a master hunter in its own domain. But what if we took this colossal carnivore out of its element? What if we placed it in a hypothetical gauntlet, a series of one-on-one -on -one encounters with the most lethal dinosaurs that ever walked the Earth? This isn't just a fantasy matchup. It's a rigorous analysis of biomechanics, predatory strategy, and the brutal laws of survival. Could the great southern lizard adapt and overcome, or would it be dethroned by creatures with deadlier weapons and more cunning tactics? First, we must understand our challenger. Giganotosaurus was a member of the Carcharodontosauridae family, the shark-toothed lizards. Stretching up to 13 meters, or 43 feet, it was one of the longest terrestrial carnivores known to science. However, it was more lightly built than its famous rival, Tyrannosaurus rex, weighing around 8 tons. Its primary weapon was its skull, a massive yet narrow instrument of death nearly 6 feet long. Unlike T. rex, which evolved to crush bone with overwhelming force, Giganotosaurus was a slicer. Its teeth were long, flattened, and serrated like steak knives. The strategy was not to pulverize but to inflict deep, catastrophic wounds, causing massive blood loss and letting shock and exhaustion do the rest. It was built to tackle prey even larger than itself, the colossal sauropods of its homeland. Now, let the gauntlet begin. Our first opponent emerges from the Cretaceous Plains, the Ankylosaurus. This is not a predator, but a fortress. Measuring up to 8 meters long and weighing 6 tons, Ankylosaurus was a living tank. Its body was covered in thick, interlocking bone plates called osteoderms, rendering it virtually immune to attack from above. Low to the ground and incredibly wide, flipping it over would be a near-impossible task for any predator and at the end of its tail, it wielded one of the most devastating defensive weapons in natural history, a massive, bony club capable of shattering the leg bones of the largest carnivores with a single, well-aimed swing. The Giganotosaurus approaches. Its predatory instincts tell it to attack, to bite down and slice. But where? Its teeth, designed to shear through flesh, would scrape uselessly against the thick armor. A bite to the head or legs would be difficult, as the Ankylosaurus would turn its back, keeping its armored plates and deadly tail facing the threat. The Giganotosaurus would circle, looking for an opening that doesn't exist. Meanwhile, the Ankylosaurus would wait, tracking the predator's movements, its tail held ready. The Giganotosaurus is intelligent enough to perform a risk assessment. The potential reward, a meal, is heavily outweighed by the catastrophic risk. A single mistake, a moment of impatience, could result in a shattered femur, a death sentence for a bipedal hunter. This is a fight Giganotosaurus cannot win through brute force. Its slicing bite is negated by impenetrable defense. Survival here means recognizing a losing battle. The giant predator would likely abandon the hunt, conserving its energy for easier prey. Verdict, survival by strategic withdrawal. The next challenge presents a different kind of defense, strength in numbers. A small herd of three adult Triceratops blocks the path. Each is a nine-ton behemoth of muscle and bone, sporting a trio of formidable horns. Two long, sharp brow horns capable of piercing deep into a predator's chest, and a shorter nasal horn, all mounted on a skull that made up a third of its body length. Giganotosaurus was a sauropod hunter, accustomed to tackling immense size. But a lone sauropod is a different challenge from a coordinated, aggressive group of ceratopsians. A direct, frontal assault would be suicidal. The herd would form a defensive wall, a phalanx of horns pointed directly at the attacker. A charge from just one of these animals could inflict a mortal wound, impaling the Giganotosaurus and using its powerful neck muscles to cause devastating internal damage. The predator's only hope lies in strategy. It must try to intimidate the herd, to create panic and confusion. It would use its immense size, roaring and making mock charges to test their resolve. Its goal is to separate one individual from the safety of the group, preferably the weakest or most inexperienced. 
If it can successfully isolate one Triceratops, its chances improve dramatically. It could use its superior height to bite down on the animal's back or neck, avoiding the deadly horns. But this is a monumental glyph. An experienced herd of Triceratops would hold its ground, their collective strength a powerful deterrent. The Giganotosaurus, facing three determined, nine-ton opponents, would be facing a wall of certain death. Verdict, survival is possible only through a clever hunt, not a direct fight. Against a prepared group, it would likely be forced to retreat or risk being fatally gored. Now the threat changes from size and power to speed and intelligence. From the shadows emerges a pack of five Uteraptors. These are not the small creatures of popular fiction. The Uteraptor was the largest of the dromaeosaurs, over 6 meters, or 20 feet, long, and weighing nearly a thousand pounds. They were armed with a 9-inch sickle claw on each foot, a weapon designed for disemboweling prey. And they were not solitary. They were pack hunters, capable of coordinated attacks. For the Giganotosaurus, this is a nightmare. Its size, once an advantage, now makes it a giant, slow-moving target. It can easily kill any single Uteraptor it can catch. A single bite would be instantly fatal. But it cannot be everywhere at once. The pack would spread out, flanking the giant. While the Giganotosaurus focuses on one or two raptors in front of it, others would attack from the sides and rear. They would be a blur of motion, leaping onto its massive legs and flanks. Their sickle claws would dig in, tearing through hide and muscle, inflicting dozens of deep, bleeding wounds. The Giganotosaurus would roar in fury and pain, snapping its jaws and trying to dislodge the attackers, but it would be like a whale beset by sharks. Each wound saps its strength. Each drop of blood brings it closer to collapse. The sheer number of attackers and the multiple angles of assault would overwhelm its defenses. It might crush one or two raptors, but the damage it would sustain in the process would be cumulative and fatal. Verdict, overwhelmed by numbers and strategy. Giganotosaurus is unlikely to survive this encounter. The fourth encounter takes us to a river's edge, the domain of another giant. Spinosaurus emerges from the water. At up to 15 meters, or 50 feet, in length, it is the longest carnivorous dinosaur ever discovered. Its conical, crocodile-like teeth are perfect for snagging slippery fish, and its huge, clawed hands are formidable weapons. Its most striking feature, a massive sail, looms over the water. This battle is defined by the environment. Spinosaurus is a specialist, exquisitely adapted for a semi-aquatic life. Its paddle-like tail could propel it through the water with terrifying speed. If the fight is drawn into the river, the Giganotosaurus is doomed. It cannot swim well enough to fight effectively and would be completely at the mercy of the Spinosaurus in its element. But on dry land, the tables turn. Giganotosaurus is a terrestrial hunter. Its legs and feet are better adapted for moving and fighting on solid ground. Its skull, while not as strong as a T-Rex's, is built for delivering devastating bites to land animals. Spinosaurus, with its taller center of gravity and legs less suited for terrestrial combat, would be at a disadvantage. The Giganotosaurus would use its greater agility on land to flank the Spinosaurus, aiming for its neck or torso. The Spinosaurus would defend itself with its powerful claws, but the primary weapon of the Giganotosaurus, its multi-toothed slicing bite, is more decisive in this context. A deep bite would cause severe hemorrhaging, weakening the aquatic giant. As long as the Giganotosaurus can keep the fight away from the water, it has the advantage, Verdict, likely to survive and win, but only if it dictates the terrain of the battle. Finally, the ultimate confrontation. The Tyrant King versus the Great Southern Lizard. A Tyrannosaurus Rex steps into the arena. It is slightly shorter than the Giganotosaurus, but it is a heavyweight. More robustly built, it weighs in at 9 tons or more and it wields the most powerful bite force of any land animal in history, an estimated 12 8. 